Hello, in today's tutorial I'm going to demonstrate how to get the best out of underexposed images of aircraft at sunset. So this picture was taken at about 5.15pm on a couple of days ago. Uh, a Saudi -er Boeing 777-300 came in and it's the first time that that plane had come in so I decided to make the trip down and it was three hours late so it ended up coming in at sunset with the Saudi Arabia national soccer team to play the Socceroos in a World Cup qualifier. Um, anyway, I had to shoot in uh, ISO 500 to maintain a shutter speed that was uh, around the focal length of the long lens I was using. Uh, I don't like shooting less than about 1 250th and the only way I could maintain a sensible shutter speed with the minimum aperture was using ISO 500. So it did create some noise, but we can remove that. Okay, so it's obviously underexposed. So there's a number of steps that you can do in Lightroom to bring up the exposure without losing a lot of detail and also to help filter out some of that noise and create an image that it was shot or an image as if it was shot a little earlier in the day. So the first thing I'll do is set white balance. Uh, this white balance is obviously very, um, well, not so much into the blue side because it's the sunset, but it's still um, less than 5,000, but I'll just set it off the, off the actual aircraft itself because the top of the, the plane was a grayish color. So I'll just reset that again. Um, so I'll just click up, up here somewhere. Usually you can click on somewhere in that part or on the engine cowling or on the, if you see some tarmac, you can click on that. Uh, also you can click on other aircraft. Um, or you can just also take a guess. Uh, this will probably have to be changed anyway because the exposure is a lot lower than normal. <clears throat> um, so the next step is to bring up the exposure slowly. Um, because it's very underexposed, um, some detail will be lost if we bring up the exposure too far. So I'm just going to start with uh, one stop for now. Uh, we can bring that up a little later. Uh, some of the other detail will be brought out through uh, shadow adjustments. Um, if you go up too far, it washes out here on these edges and you lose a lot of detail. So I'm just going to keep it at one, one for now. Um, we don't need to reduce. So next step is to do highlights and shadows. We don't need to reduce highlights because it's so underexposed anyway. Uh, any highlight uh, clipping will already have been removed. So basically I have to do nothing. Um, so I'll leave it at zero, but for shadows, we definitely have to bring that up. Uh, shadows and blacks too. We have to br bring all that up. Uh, minimum, minimum 30, 35. I'm going to go up to 50 and shadows up to about 60. Uh, we don't want to go up too far because it starts to create a very noisy image because uh, it's trying to bring out detail and pixels that are already dark. So it's very easy to lose a lot of detail quickly. So 50 on both is fine. Uh, we might just bring down whites a touch just, um, just for some of the lights there. It doesn't really change anything because it's so underexposed. Uh, clarity I won't really play with because I don't want to lose detail again on the edges. And you also create black rims. So I'll just probably just do about 20. That's fine. Um, I'll probably bump up vibrance because being underexposed, so a lot of the color detail is lost, but I don't want to go up too far and create a, a cartoon effect. Same with saturation, just up, up to 10 there. It's fine. Um, and then after that, I tend to work from the bottom up. <clears throat> Usually do the things that I prefer to do. Um, I've been keeping uh, camera colors at Adobe Standard lately. The um, The natural and vivid and stuff is starting to look a little bit cartoony and oversaturated. Uh, for dehazing, I don't need to dehaze at all really uh, because being underexposed, um, dehazing tends to darken the image anyway, so we don't want to 
dark and an already underexposed image. Uh, for uh, vignetting, not going to do any vignetting for this image. Uh, being so dark, um, the corners tend to be darkened anyway. And we don't really need to focus on a particular part of the image. Um, and no grain because it's pretty grainy anyway. And I don't tend to use those, those effects. Uh, we get, definitely have to do chromatic aberration. Because the um, long lens tends to uh, have a lot of uh, purple and green edges. Um, so I'm just going to, you can see a little bit there. So I'm just going to go four and four. Don't want to go too far because being underexposed, you can lose uh, detail on the edges because there's a lot of dark pixels. Um, so now onto the major. Uh, Let's see how that goes. Yeah, we don't want to be doing um, lens corrections on an image with no horizon. So I'm going to leave that. That's fine. Uh, so now the major uh, part of this image uh, is the sharpening phase. So I'm going to load my preset for ISO 100 type images. Uh, 40 0 0.8 radius, 40 and 30, and 35 noise reduction. Because this is an ISO 500, uh, we can go up to 45 uh, straight away. Uh, we don't want to go too far because, again, we start losing detail. We've already lost uh, quite a bit of detail there. Um, it's easy to become washed out and uh, the edges to be very, very unclear. But uh, we definitely need to be sharpening. Uh, definitely need to going up on radius, trying to get some detail back. Uh, ISO 500 is not normally, I norm, not wouldn't normally shoot that high, uh, but I had to in this case. If it was a daytime image, I would just, just shot in uh, ISO 200, 1 800th of a second. And I wouldn't have had any problems. Might have been able to get even get away with ISO 100. So I'm definitely going to sharpen this image more than I normally would. Uh, 50 on the amount. Don't want to go too far because you get get this awful look, so uh, 50, 1.5 to 2 is good, detail, not not too far from the 40, and masking, I actually will turn up the masking a little bit, so it's only sharpening the edges rather than the whole body. So as you can see, it's already helped quite a bit, uh, without losing a lot of detail in the image. Um, so now I'm not going to touch split toning because I don't think it really needs to be touched. Uh, again, I don't want to be swapping colors and uh, making drastic changes to tone. And being underexposed anyway, um, a lot of the bright areas that normally would be washed out with blues are in this case. So I don't need to be resetting tones like that. Um, so now color time. Um, being a very yellowy looking image, um, to start with, we do want to turn some of these oranges and yellows down uh, a little bit, but not too much. Otherwise, it um, changes the actual tone of the aircraft and uh, makes the background, it almost uh, camouflages it in the background. So you do have to keep a little bit of the uh, reflection from the sun there. Uh, to maintain 3D effect, but I'm going to turn up blues a little bit too because um, being underexposed, it's um, almost black. Black and white, so you've got to just bring it up a little bit. Not too much. And we don't want a blue tone on the image. Um, so now, just some more fine-tuning. I'll do some spot removal first because I did just see a spot there. Um, I usually do my usual technique. There's a couple of spots there. Oh, a big spot over here um, from birds. So I do want to take those out. Just with heel. Done. And quite easy. Uh, let's see if there's any more spots there. Uh, spot removal is up to you, off, uh, everyone has their own beliefs as to what what's needs to be removed, what could stay. 
Um, I will remove this reflection here from the landing light on the nose. Um, it's probably going to be a bit hard given that it's such a noisy image trying to match an area. But that's pretty good. Doesn't need to be too much, just enough to hide it, really. Um, you can also remove some of these uh, bits on the plane from uh, logos and pitot tubes and all that, but I'm going to keep those. Um, it looks pretty good. Do want to keep the lights on there, give a sense of darkness. And so now to fine tune shadows and things. Uh, then again, it's it's really up to you. Like I don't really, I have more of a tendency to bring out shadows in my images and um, much higher contrast. Um, this image being underexposed, it's very hard to maintain and bring out detail without turning it into an awful, um, almost uh, washed out, like noisy image with no detail. Um, I will actually turn down the purples because um, when I brought the shadows up, it did turn quite a lot of areas. Purple in the engines there. Um, but that's doesn't need to be too much. I just sort of play with things, you know, click and click and ho see what see what things do, but try and look semi realistic. Being such a high ISO, um, it can be really hard to get a suitable looking image for publication on Flickr or 500px or whatever site you prefer. I uh, just almost at one million views on Flickr, so. Pressure is on for me to upload good images, not not just rubbish. Or by rubbish, I mean um, like blurry, out of focus, um, too much sharpening, that sort of thing. Um, this image has actually turned out a lot better for being for being so underexposed. Um, it has the techniques I've used have helped to. Bring out a little bit of detail. I can actually go up on exposure a little bit more. 1.2. Now the histogram's in the middle. So we're almost at an exposure level that's quite good. 1.2, yeah. It's um very very good actually. Um but an image that I did actually kinda try and shoot underexposed a little bit. Um on on site because I didn't want to have ISO 1000 uh, to get the exposure right and then have it so noisy it ruins the image. Being such a rare visit for the probably the only visit this aircraft will ever have and the airline will ever have uh, it's important to get the pictures right. So now to uh, just crop it down do want to remove some of the sky there and don't, don't have to crop too much because um, the aircraft is pretty much fully in the frame anyway uh, to start with um, <clears throat> so I don't want to take too much out but then um, see, we can go like this and then have it have an image of just the aircraft but then it, it's I like to have a little bit more scenery showing, just to bring out some give a sense of where it is. So that's why I've used sixteen by nine or sixteen by ten, and just just done it like that. It doesn't have to be too much. Um, so the other image that I was going to demonstrate on, just with those same settings, is this one, with it a little bit closer to the frame. So something like this, where it's um, it's it's pretty much in the same spot, but it's a little bit further down. Uh, I chose that first one because that was actually the one that looked to the best for me. Um, shooting in high speed, you always get one or two images that you like, and it's just a matter of choosing choosing the one you like best um, in the sequence. 
and then I'm starting to get doubling here um, because it's a little bit out of focus because uh, it's past the lens focal point. So it's, and being so high ISO, uh, it's very, very difficult to maintain detail. Uh, um, in a high ISO. Being so far away too, not many pixels of the frame are devoted to the thing in focus. There's a lot of background skies and other things that are taking pixels away. I probably could have zoomed a little higher on the lens, but I wanted to make sure I got the the aircraft fully in, in the frame and not cut off. And also when it comes in, you haven't got a lot of time to to prepare settings. You sort of set about 200 uh, millimeters on the lens and then set a sh uh, go into shutter priority and oh actually no I shot this on aperture priority because um, I wanted the minimum widest aperture I could get away with so I just um, set a lens and just took the images and edit the one that looks the best so that's my technique for bringing out underexposed images uh, I hope you enjoyed got something out of it and can apply it into your Lightroom techniques and if there's any questions or comments that you have regarding my techniques or how I took the photos or what it, what I could do to bring out more detail or shooting techniques that would be much appreciated and stay tuned to my channel as well for more Lightroom technique videos thanks for watching